Even fear is growing tired of fear. October 27, 2014 Greetings dear ones. As the month of October is coming to a close, we understand that many of you feel like you have no idea what is next. You may find yourself shifting from joy, to fear, to sadness, to anger and then back again, all the while marveling at how surreal and incredible this whole month has appeared. Many times it seems as if you are outside of yourself observing the whole thing through a two-way mirror. Watching with detachment and keeping the illusions of drama and chaos at an arm's length. Then suddenly you find yourselves in the thick of the action surrounded by emotional upheaval and reactionary patterns that you haven't engaged with in months, or even years. You may find yourselves picking up old habits of thought and belief and in the very next moment remembering how outdated they are and remembering that you have long since discarded them. You find yourselves laughing at what once used to cause you fear, not out of a lack of compassion for those who still choose the path of fear but out of a recognition of how far you have come. Your amusement is of the remembrance of how those paper tigers used to immobilize you but how you now see them for what they are merely an opportunity to see past the illusions that once used to keep you so transfixed. So many at this time are still becoming accustomed to the energy of detachment. When you have spent so much time trapped in the illusions of fear and separation, detachment can feel very uneasy. We remind you that worry is not the same as compassion. That being upset about something isn't a gauge of how much you care. Creating drama is not evidence of your concern. It is only through your steadfast alignment with an offering of love that you can be a pillar of strength and a beacon of light. The only pandemic that exists upon your planet, is a pandemic of fear. Anything else is only a manifestation of that fear. There are many groups upon Earth right now who are beating the drum of fear and anxiety, screaming at the top of their lungs for everyone to beware. Yet it would seem that even those groups are like an actor who has grown weary of their performance. The lines they have been tasked with speaking have lost their resonance and they no longer care to play the parts they once agreed to play. Even the fear that used to hold so many of you so tightly in its grip is fading. It is almost as if fear doesn't even believe in itself any longer. It is putting on a show that fewer and fewer people are showing up to take part in. For the sake of this message, we would like to personify fear for a moment. It is like an actor who used to pack the house to the rafters, and now sees fewer and fewer people showing up. Fear ends its nightly routine and as it sits in the dressing room, removing the makeup and taking off the costume, it knows that its successful run is almost over. Fear is elated at this development, because fear can only continue to perform its one-man show as long as people come to watch. It agreed long ago to play the part it has played so that there would be contrast available to ensure you had another choice to choose. Fear is just as eager to retire its illusory act as we are to see it retire. Playing the part of the villain is exhausting and is only rewarding as long as there are people in the audience. When you see fear rear its costumed head, bless it and thank it for all that it has done. Say thank you for the service it has provided and remind it that it no longer has top billing and that it is now retired. How appropriate the upcoming celebration of Halloween is at this time. It is a wonderful opportunity to externalize your internal monster. To dress it up and make it a caricature of what it once was. To drag the boogeymen from the closet and out from under the bed, and to invite them to dance and play with you brings an immediate shift in your energy. When you reassert that fear is not only no longer in charge but that it is no longer necessary, you free up the energetic space that it once held in your vibration. You are only bound by your perception of that which you are. When you are choosing to let fear exist in your field, it will lovingly show up to play the part that you have requested it to play. We remind you that when you desire something, that you are immediately provided with the essence of what you have requested. Whether the essence of it is love or fear, you will be provided with the means to realize your request. When you begin to observe the fear-based structures in your life as you would a child having a tantrum, you comprehend that it is not the tantrum that needs your acknowledgement, for the tantrum is the symptom. When you see fear show up in your life, merely ask it what it needs for you to see, 
to hear, to feel, and it will immediately show you. Once you see that the fear is only a masked aspect of who you are, you can poke through the illusion and love what has shown up masked in fear. Just like the children who will show up on your doorstep with refrains of trick or treat. You will not run in fear that it is an actual goblin that has shown up, but merely another childlike part of you that has emerged for you to acknowledge. Once you have acknowledged it, you can then assess whether or not it is an aspect that needs healing and release or healing and integration. Either way, the fear is not the truth, but merely the aspect that is hiding behind the mask of fear. Continue to practice compassionate detachment when you see others locked in the choice of fear. Continue to love and bless all aspects of yourself that show up seemingly with the intention of causing you fear. They are no more than an aspect of all that is dressed up in costume playing the part that they agreed to play. In love and light we leave you. Rejoice. The Lighted Ones Channeled by Andrew Martin www.thelightedones.com